It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. 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 And one thing you mentioned um, that I really like is that you took as long as possible and you did it very strategically. You waited till you had those two years of tax returns and things. And I mean, you see it all over the internet, right? Like jobs are a scam, quit your job, <laughs> go on and so forth. And, you know, I, trust me, I understand the positioning. I get it. You know, I, I, I get right. it. But I think a lot of people get carried away with it and take it literally when it's not always meant that right. way. Um, right. There could be benefits to uh, keeping your nine to five for some time, you know, to get loans or different things. Like I think people should be strategic with it and not impulsive with it. If you can help yourself, you know, some people are just right. in miserable work situations where sometimes you've got to make that jump and just right. do your own thing. But that's not everybody, you know. Um, so I think it's inspiring to hear um, that you did it differently. You, you took it, it took a little bit longer until mm -hmm. you know you left. Yeah, man. I, I think um, I, you know I agree with you. You know, because I'll, I'll make posts from time to time. And it's like, hey, man, your job don't love you, right? And that's yeah. and, and that's what, <laughs> it, but that's what it's intended for. Like, I want people to know that, like. I mentioned before, like, I wanted to give myself the choice to work, mm -hmm. right? And I got to that point way quicker than I actually decided to quit. But there's freedom in just knowing that you can if the situation calls for it, right? That's important, right? And I also believe that, like, you, a, a job is... Um, I mean, it's making somebody else wealthy. That's, that's, that's what you're doing. And I think that we just need to be cognizant of the situation that we're in so that we can leverage that job to our advantage. And I think a lot of the times, I think what people are, what people are trying to say is, yeah, your job, is it a scam? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they want to, they want to <laughs> give you a salary, right. And keep you working there forever at the lowest possible rate they can that that won't let you walk out the door right like that's that's what they're that's a business that's what a business does i'm not saying that you should leave because of that i'm saying that you just need to know that that's what they're doing understand that your job is to make them rich and make them money right and don't let that be all you focus on because once you know that like once i figured out that like hey man like my job is to make this really rich family a whole lot more rich and like if i give them all my energy like all i got in that eight to nine hours that they got me and then i get home and i got no energy to build anything for myself that's a problem right and so it's just being aware that like they're going to take as much as you give them i'm not saying do a bad job do do your job and do it well but save some of that energy for your family. Save some of that energy for building your own and minding your own business when you come home so that you can put yourself in a position to have the option to work. And then if you want to leave, leave, even if you don't, no. But at least you have a choice now. Love it. Love it. Uh, so talk to us about that last day when you turned everything in and, <laughs> you know, thank you for everything. And you walked out and... The nine to five is no more. Talk to us about that moment. Yeah, man. So it's a little different in this in this COVID environment. It, it wasn't it wasn't everything I thought it would be. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so kind of the way it played out. Um, so kind of the way it played out was, uh, in all honesty, like. I was falling behind in some of my work manager. Uh, I called him because I had a question about some of those tasks. And after he answered my question, like he just kind of had a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> and I was like digging into what's going on. And he basically told me that I was that I was slacking, right? And not and not getting things done in the time we manner. And that's not how we operate as a company and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And like in those moments, in those conversations, your ego wants to go, man, I gotta work hard. And I, right. But like when I stepped back and, and thought about it, I was like, he's, I mean, he's right. Right. Um, he's right. I could be doing more. Right. And then I had to ask myself a series of questions my, because 
you know, as an employee of that company, I need to do what I said I would do when I signed that offer letter. And so I said, okay, if I have to make this right, what's that going to take? Right. And when I started thinking about like the level of effort that it was going to take to kind of get caught up and make that right, I started to think about how that would impact these other streams of income that I have. Right. And then I had to do some math and figure out, okay, if I take that same level of effort and put it into these side businesses, what's the opportunity cost for me? Because I know if I take that same level of effort and put it into my day job, the opportunity cost doesn't go up. It's my salary, period, right? And so as I started to do that math, I was like, I mean, if I do this right, I could make my salary in 30 to 60 days versus a year. And so that's when it was like, okay, well, it just doesn't make any more sense for me to be here because if I can't give them everything that they require and it makes more sense for me to put that effort somewhere else and bet on myself with it, then that's what I need to do. And so I had that conversation. So I called my, I called my bosses that, you know, the next day or so. And I just, I was, I was up front with them. I told them, Hey, you're right. I understand why you feel that way. Here's the things that I've got going on. And it just doesn't make sense for me to put that effort in this direction. They totally understood. They were, a, they were a company, they hired me because I was a real estate investor. Yeah. Right. So they knew I was doing that on the side. Right. But it was a benefit to them that I had some of that knowledge. And so for me to tell them that I was going to go put that effort into my own business, wasn't a huge surprise to them. Um, and so when I left, um, I, I, I wanted to be fair. I was like, look, I'll give you as long as you need. We're in this period where we were doing a lot of work. They needed some extra help. And I was like, I don't just want to give you all two weeks and say I'm gone. Like, if you need me to stay longer, I'll stay longer. And so we agreed on uh, 30 days uh, for me to, to finish out my, my work there. And I think, I think we got through like two days and my manager <laughs> called me and he was like, hey, yeah, uh, we talked and I think we're good if you just want to call it good here. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like okay like if you want me to leave now I'll leave now and he was like yeah yeah I think it's probably just best if we you know we separate now uh and I was like did I just get fired from quitting <laughs> <laughs> basically <laughs> <laughs> right uh, but but there was no hard feelings at all like they were just they were just you know, it, it happens a lot of the times when you put in your notice with someplace mm -hmm. they just figure it's better to, to to cut the ties quick and get somebody else trained up versus to spend the time on somebody that they know is out the door and so there was no hard feelings i still i still meet with my old boss we had lunch like a week or so ago and, and we were talking so it, it's all it's all been positive but it was good to just be able to walk away man it was good to know that like you know, I bet on me and uh, uh, it's still scary. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. You know, when that last paycheck direct deposit hits and you know, ain't, ain't no more coming, this is a scary feeling, but, um, but it's been good, man. Uh, the My business is, we had our best month ever last month. Right. And that was the really my first like full month focusing on my business. So it's confirmation that I did the right thing. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Very, very inspirational. Um, so over the last like year and a half, um, have you tried any different real estate strategies than you were doing back then? I know back then you used to try to, you're super creative, very creative. Yeah. So like, were you doubling down on what was working or did you end up trying some new strategies? Uh, you know, what's funny is I just now started trying a new strategy. Um, but up until now I hadn't because COVID threw a wrench in, in a lot of that. And so once COVID once COVID hit, so like I was branching out and I was doing, I did a storage unit deal actually. And so like I bought a, had a storage unit under contract and then, and then that's right when COVID went, when hit, when COVID hit and everything started to shut down mm -hmm. and we ended up buying it because we had, we had, we had contracted to do it. And the plan was to hold it. It was going to be a great cash flowing asset, but you remember the beginning of COVID, nobody knew what was going to happen real estate was going to tank commercial real estate was going to tank like the world was going to go to crap and so like we just were like all right we don't know what's going to happen but we know cash will be king if things go crazy so instead of holding it let's flip it because there was equity in it and uh we sold it and so we made a great chunk of change it wasn't a bad deal to sell it um 
But, you know, knowing what I know now about real estate, it's appreciated a ton since then and, I, and we should have kept it. But, you know, at that, at that point, we did what we felt was the smartest decision. And so from there, I just got pretty conservative. So I never stopped buying and I never stopped doing deals through COVID. I just got a little more strict on my numbers. And so there were several deals that I passed on because the numbers were tighter than I would have liked. Um, and But pre-COVID, I probably would have bought mm -hmm. because I, I had a better understanding of the market. But kind of as COVID, in, the, in the throes of COVID, we just didn't know what was going to happen. And so there were some, some deals that we passed on, and, uh, but we continued to buy. And, um, and now the market's gone crazy. And so I probably should have bought everything that, that came across my desk. But, but you know, you have to be cautious because you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. And so, um, uh, so what we did was I just stayed, I stayed, I stayed the course, right? I continued marketing. I continued to buy deals. I didn't pour a bunch more money into marketing because I didn't know how effective it would be because a lot of people before the market went crazy, before the prices went up, a lot of people were holding on to their assets because they wanted to put their money in things they could touch um, uh, in, in when things got a little chaotic. But then once the real estate market started to boom, now everybody's trying to sell it and, and capitalize on that. Um, so it wasn't until just this month that, I branched out. And so typically my main deal finding strategies have been direct mail and they've been uh, my lead generation website. So people go to find me on the website and they, and they fill out a form that if they want to sell their home. And so the website hasn't been returning as high of results. It's been super slow, mm -hmm. and, but the website's expensive. And so what I've done is I've diverted some of that, I've diverted the capital from the Google AdWords campaign and I put it into cold calling. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are doing cold calling and text messages for marketing for real estate deals. Text messages is getting a little funky with the rules and, uh, and so I, I, that's starting to die down. And so I was like, well, let's try this cold calling thing. And I found a, I found a company that cold calls for you because I hate cold calling. And so <laughs> um, they cold call for you in scale and volume. And so uh, I diverted that capital to there. I gave them a list and they've been calling for me for about uh, probably a week now. And it's generated quite a few leads. <laughs> it's already generated more leads than my website generated in like three months. So, uh, so far, so far, so good. Um, so a little more creative with how we're finding deals, like how we're sourcing the deals. But as far as like how we're taking them down, it's still very similar. Hi everyone, Sam here from Black Real Estate Dialogue. Make sure to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button and to visit us at blackrealestatedialogue.com.